Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, well, back once again for another Fight Card prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night 141 from Beijing, China. As Curtis Blades faces off against Francis Ngannou, a rematch that happened a few years ago in Croatia, where Francis got the, the win via Dr. Stoppage there, I think at the end of the second round, when Blades' his eye closed over. Uh, and a fairly competitive fight as well, very early on in both guys' UFC careers. And the only loss of Blades' UFC career so far. Um, I'm kind of doing this, going to do this on a little bit different. I'm going to try and fire through it in under 20, 30 minutes if I can. And uh, I've watched a few fights for some. There's some fights it's really hard to actually get a hold of some tape on these guys, some action on them. Um, and to me, it seems like a, a fairly... Um, it looks like they're trying to pump up their their Chinese prospects here. There's a lot of kind of mismatches, I think, try to get them wins. There's a couple in there which I'm not... 100% sure of um, but yeah, interesting fight card on the least um, coming off the Argentina card, I thought it was a fun card, I didn't, I couldn't stay up for it, I was so tired, I fell asleep through uh, right at the start of the main card of Colvia and uh, Batelho um, still managed to crack a profit in DraftKings um, Johnny Walker saved me there um, Baton, I managed to get a profit again as well, and taking my profits for the year up um <clears throat> so yeah i had a couple of picks in there that which were kind of bad like arnett as the, the week went on i really liked <clears throat> excuse me i really liked arnett over bandanai and bandanai is a terrible fighter um who else was another one that i wasn't sure sh- heinish heinish was another one as the week went on i thought oh, i should have put cesar freire as a, a confident pick uh, as the week went on if that i had to change probably one pick through the whole card it would probably be that one or the uh, Lamas. Lamas was another one thinking close at the fight. Like I think Elkins is on that um, gatekeeper f- to get the top fifteen kind of guy. Lamas should have too much, and he showed that. But I thought I'd just take a, a shot in him anyway. Um, but nonetheless, thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you for all the new comments. Um, I appreciate that, guys. I really do. Um, and just building my channel, helping me build my channel. I really do appreciate it. So we're going to get into this. I'm going to try and fire through it fairly rapidly. There's some fights on here that um, don't warrant longer than a couple of minutes anyway. Um, I'm going to start off, I, I haven't got the correct order, I don't think, but I'm going to start off with what I see on um, here on, uh, what am I looking at? Uh, yeah, I'm on Wikipedia, sorry, um, at the minute. So uh, starting off in the Bantamweight division, we've got Louis Smolka, who's returning to the UFC against Suma, Suma Dergi, Suma Dergi, I think his name is. So he's got the same first name and Last night, I think that's how you pronounce it, Suma, Suma, Dere, Suma Dergi, I think that's the way it is. Um, and Suma Dergi is a guy that, uh, it was kind of hard to find some tape on this guy. I literally got some uh, fights sent through to me in the last, I want to say, hour and a half. Watched that. Um, and he's a kid who, he's lost, I think, three times by submission. One of Smoker's strong suits is his submission. Um, some of these losses were back in the day when he looked kind of green. Still think he is kind of green coming off a loss in his UFC here, uh, UFC debut. Louis Smoker's getting another crack in the UFC up at Bantamweight uh, after three fights outside the UFC. And I must admit, the, the fights that he fought outside the UFC weren't against anybody of any real note. I saw his last fight against Kyle Estrada. He was kind of getting a little bit beat up a little bit in that fight. And then um, the referee stopped it in the second round due to a, a cut, I think it was. Um, but like I say, the guys that he's beaten is not, not great. Um, the people that he lost in the UFC, nonetheless, were very good. Nikolai, Borg, uh, Elliot are all crafty, crafty guys. Um, but he's always super hittable. And I think what Suma Dergi's strong point is, um, is that he's pretty good in the feet, he's pretty nimble, and he's got decent striking. I think if it goes to the ground, I think Smoker maybe um, eats him up down there being honest um but on the feet i think that louis smoker is there to be got i really do um and i'm not confident in louis smoker coming in here and just wiping this young kid out i really don't i think it, it could it could turn out to be that i'm just not i'm not sold on smoker's uh, stand-up skills and i don't think his defense has got any better since he left the ufc so i'm gonna i'm gonna pick him to win but i think he's gonna have some hairy moments in this fight i wouldn't put him as a confident pick at all i'll go louis smoker i'll go Mid to late submission, but like I say, I'm not really not super confident or super comfortable with that pick. Um, 
Kevin Holland against John Phillips. Initially, when I heard this fight, I thought, right, this could be interesting because Kevin Holland likes to play the fool a little bit, uh, be very cocky, kind of plays into some some of the people's game. He did it with Thiago Santos a little bit. Um, and I thought, right, this could be a predominantly a striking striking fight. And that kind of plays into John Phillips' hand because he's known for having big power. Even though I don't think he's the best technical striker, he kind of wings, hooks. Um, and then I thought, wait, when I watched some of Kevin Holland's fights again, um, he can get takedowns and he can kind of dominate from there and look for submissions. So I, th- I pretty much think that's the way this is kind of going to go. He's... Uh, going to come out, taste something free. I think he's going to realise he can take John Phillips down. And from there, I think he's just going to rip him apart a little bit, uh, advance in positions, style him a little bit. I think he could get a stoppage via TKO. I think he'd get a stoppage by submission. Um, I'll go TKO. I think that um, early on, I think, like I say, he'll stand with John Phillips. He'll come forward, taste the power, see see how it's going. And I think he'll realise that, look, I can get this guy down. I can finish him. We've seen in John Phillips' UFC debut that... Um, He's kind of a little bit like a fish out of water down there. Charles Bud really just beat his ass pretty much down in there and uh, submitted him very, very early on in the, in the first round there where Rear could choke. Um, Phillips literally did nothing in that. He kind of got taken down, passed a few times, and then got submitted. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Kevin Holland via, via stoppage. Submission, TKO. If I have to make it official, I'll go TKO, uh, maybe even round number one, actually, for Kevin Holland in that one there. Moving on, women's strawweight division. I don't know, like I said, I don't know where this is going um, regarding the card order, but I'm going to just go what I'm seeing here. Mm-hmm. Yan Zhaonan against uh, Suri Kondo. Uh, I spoke about Kondo last week. She was the one that um, got hurt by Botello with that low kick. And, uh, yeah. That's all you can really say with that fight. She came out, get hit with a ping to the liver and then got put out. Uh, she beat Chan Mi Ji on in a, a, a UFC debut. And even that was really close. She's known as a boxer um, from that professional kind of wrestling background as well. She's got a bit of that. But uh, predominantly, I think she's, she is a boxer. Yan Zhaonan, I think, for me, I really think she's got too much uh, variety. I think she, she uses angles better. I think she uses combinations better. Um, and she she goes she she's got some decent kicks on her as well. I think uh, like some of the odds in this card are really really. I've I've got two bets that I like, but it's like hard to be super confident in them. Um, one's like a three person parlay, which I'm doing okay with parlays. I, I love doing parlays actually, um, and they they've fared me well. But doing three three people one is a little bit, especially at minus three hundred minus four hundred. It's like eesh, a little bit sketchy. But I do think a caster is a really good underdog in Viviana Pereira. She's like plus 200. Um, I think the betting odds are kind of warranted a little bit. Maybe not as high. Maybe it could come down a little bit. But uh, I like Yang Jena and I think she's got, like I say, more variety. She angles off more. She's more aggressive. She will throw more. Um, I just think she'll outwork Suri Kondo 15 minutes of this fight if she doesn't stop her. So I'm going to go Yang Jaunan. I'm going to go a UD in that one there. Talking of domination, we've got Wally Zhang against Jessica Aguilar. Like I say, I think these are set up fights for the Korean fight, for the Chinese fighters in this card. For most of them. Um, when I look at Jessica Aguilar, she's a shell of herself from what she was back in the day in the World Series of Fights days. Um, she is a, an absolute shell of herself, really, and she's not looked good in her UFC tenure, two losses to Gadelia, Courtney Casey, which was an eye-opener for me. She was getting beat up. Casey was on her back and she was beating this girl up with up kicks and so on. I picked against her last time against Jody Escobel and it, I actually bet Jody Escobel and that came back and bet me in the ass. So um, she can kind of spoil the party a little bit. I don't think she will here. When Wei Zhang is on, she is an absolute beast. And I'm saying that with... Um, can almost respect, but when you look at her, her, her uh, opponents, although not being good, she has styled on them and she's made it look very, very easy like knockouts, arm bars, um, and early on in fights as well. She's coming off that fight with um, Daniel Taylor, and I've seen a lot of people say she's overrated. Daniel Taylor is hard to look good against because she doesn't throw much. She's small, she's fast, she she doesn't want to engage. 
and Wally Zhang. It was a debut, maybe a bit of nerves. She still went in there and uh, won a unanimous decision fairly comfortably. I think she will show more in this fight here. I think Aguilar will look for takedowns. I don't think she's as strong as what Zhang is. She's not as athletic as what Zhang is. So I fully expect Willie Zhang to come out here and just beat her on the feet. And I actually think she could stop Jessica Aguilar. Aguilar's tough, but I think that Willie Zhang is going to come in here and really put it on her and win via TKO. I'll go for a second round there. Moving on, women's flyweight division, Wu Yanan against Lauren Mueller. <laughs> Lauren Mueller all day in this one. I'm not even going to go into it. Um, Gina Mazzani beat this girl, Wu Yanan. Um, I actually think I bet Wu Yanan in that fight. That's bad. Thinking about it now, I'll need to go back and look at that, but it's still bad. Um, last year, Isla this year, whenever it was. But Lauren Mueller, I like what I see in her hands. I think she's crisp with her striking. She, she has some nice combinations in the Dobson fight. I think I thought she dominated, looked strong. Um, and like I say, Wu Yanan in that Gina Mazzani fight just did not look UFC caliber. I think she's the type of girl that you throw on these Chinese um, Asian cards, fill them up a little bit. Like some of the fighters in this card, let's be honest. But uh, I like Lauren Mueller. I'm not going to get into it too much. I think she she takes her out as well. I'd be surprised if this goes to 15 minutes. I think that Mueller's got all the options there to to take her out and get a stoppage win here. Maybe Yanan's not as uh, maybe tougher than I think she is. But I, I like Lauren Mueller there. She'll probably be a confident pick of mine. Um, so, yeah. Moving on, uh, Ping Wang Lu against Martin Day. Martin Day's a tough fighter. He is. He's a really... Um, Solid kind of fight. Those guys that come out of Hawaii are, are always tough, scrappy dudes, um, down to fight. And you've just got to be to, to be on your kind of game when you face them. But when you... I, I saw his last two fights against uh, Shoujin uh, Miki, I think it was, and uh, Brady Huang. And um, dominant, especially his last fight. TKO in the second round looked very crisp, fought very well. Um when I heard that Martin Day had signed, I was like, I've heard that name before. Again, it was against Jamie Alvarez that he lost to on the Dana White show back in 2017. So that's where I remembered him from. But he's another guy that's been fighting these one and fours and four and twos and um, two and all guys. I mean, it's a big, I don't want to say it's a big step up, but he's facing, it's not a big step up, let's be honest. Ping Yang Lu is only nine and two. He's not really fought anybody of any kind of real note except for his UFC debut against Damon Stasiak. What I like about the kid I think he can. I think he is super, super aggressive. Like maybe too aggressive to its detriment. Um, there to be taken down if you're, you're a decent grappler. I think that stays that took him down three, four times. I want to say in that fight, worked well to get back to his feet. Um, but there is definitely some defensive frailties kind of with that guy there. Can Martin Day do enough in this one? I'm not sure. I think that. There is definitely openings there from from um, Ping Yuang. I think that you can, you can get on Lu Ping, uh, Ping Yuang. I think there is definitely aspects you can get at Lu. There's different parts of his game you can get because he is aggressive. He is open. You maybe if you're a good counter striker, you can get him throws leg kicks. So he's open to combinations if you can block off or or side off um, angle off. Sorry, and um, get him there. I just think that Ping's going to do more and I think that he's the more kind of dangerous I think his aggression might kind of help him this. I think he's going to be G'd on with the crowd fighting at home I don't think he'll take out Martin Day but I think he will win a decision in that one there uh, Hugh, Yao Zong Hu against Rashad Coulter two guys that were at heavyweight I think they're moving down to light heavyweight they weren't good at heavyweight I, I very much doubt they're going to be very good at light heavyweight um, I don't know with this one. This it's two very low level guys. Um, yeah, two super low level guys. You've got someone in Rashad Coulter who not great. Got heart. Got a little bit. I was going to say durability, but he's not really got that. But he has got heart to kind of stay in the fight. So he can take a lick, keep on coming. Especially when we've seen the fight with Chase Sherman. I mean, his losses, like, outside the two of us, loss, who's now main event in a UFC um, card, lo losses to Delahosha and, and Sherman, 
doesn't bode well if you're going to stick around the UFC. Now, in saying that, he's got a Chinese youngster here who's 3-1. He's 3-1 and in the UFC, um, and he's in the UFC. He should never really be in the UFC. He's only he's really only made for these Chinese cards. Um, very, very raw. Coming up, he's, he lost to Sir Alaska, and Sir Alaska's never been a, a great, great fighter. Um and he was there he got that from the get going that fight and he got taken out in the the I want to say the second round it was. Was it TK? I don't know. I think it was a submission. Yeah, it was. It was a submission. Um But I think he's been at Team Alpha Male for this one. There's been a few guys that's been I think Lu Ping Yang's been there and Song Dong. So they have got a, a little bit of a Chinese contingent there over there in California. Um so you'd expect them to make Changes to his game, you're expecting to get better, but he's still very, very low level. But in saying that, Rashad Coulter's the same. He's maybe got a bit more power, a bit more heart. Toss of the coin. I'll go with the Chinese young. So I'll take a, I'll take a, a little Hail Mary sweep. A Hail Mary ball, sorry, I should say. A Hail Mary throw, that's the word I'm looking for, sorry. Late night, I'm tired. Um, a Hail Mary throw, I'll take, a, I'll take a shot on Chinese youngster to get his... I think it'll be his only win he'll ever get in the UFC. But, uh, yeah, I'll go with Yao Zong in that one there to win. But it's kind of it's kind of weird picking a 3 and one guy in a UFC fight, I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is going to be an interesting fight. Kinan Song against Alex Morono. I was pretty, actually, heavy on Alex Morono. And then I've kind of turned my kind of thoughts around in that a little bit because when you watch his last fight against Jordan Main, he, he didn't look in great shape. To be honest with you, I didn't think he looked all that good. Um looked hittable. And saying that Kinan Song, in my opinion, is not that good either. I thought Hector Aldana was having his way with him. And we all saw what happened with Aldana last night. I know I bet him. I, I did think, I, I don't regret the bet on Aldana at all because what I seen in Staro play, um, was a far different fighter last night to what I've seen beforehand. Um, so he's obviously made great improvements, but the, the betting line was off, and me and many others betting Aldana, and maybe that's a kind of curse that you've got to look out for in the future. But uh, and Staropoli looked great in his, his hometown. Fair play to the guy. Um, but Kenan Sung, he, the guys he's faced, Aldana, Bobby Nash, who really hasn't got a chin, he, he's caught them napping and uh, put them to sleep. But in my opinion, he was losing that fight to Hector Aldana, so it's hard to be super, super confident in this guy. And before that, he came into the UFC off two losses as well. So, um, And he's been knocked out a lot of times. I mean, Israel Adesanya knocked him out back in the day. And uh, Brad Riddle, who we might see in the UFC one day, I don't know, um, knocked him out as well in the second round. It's kind of hard here because I think Morono's tough. You know what? I was going to go with Kenan Song, but my initial gut feeling when I was watching t- a few fights beforehand and when I first heard the matchup was Alex Morono. I think he's just a little bit more tougher. Um, oh, that's a tough one. Fudge. Um, yeah, I'll stick with my original play of Alex Morono. Um, but how does he win the fight? Because I really don't think he wins this fight if it goes to the decision. Love the fact, I think he fights out of Fortis MMA in Texas, which is a, a growing uh, MMA camp, which I've got a, a lot of hope for. There's a lot of good fighters coming through there, and they've they've had UFC wins this year. It's like a couple of these new gyms coming up, Fortis MMA and Factory X and so on. Been around for a while, but now starting to get the rec- recognition they deserve. You know what? I'm going to go. I'm not going to. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go with Keenan Song via decision. Wouldn't surprise me if Morono wins. Oh, it's a tough fight to call. I did not like what I seen against Jordan Main last time out from Alex Morono. I think if he was better in that fight, I think we'd pick him here. I can't believe I'm picking Kenan Song though. Uh, Kenan Song decision, not confident at all in that one there. This one, this next, next one's going to be a scrap. Li Xing Liang Leech against. Um, Sagat, David Zawada. Uh, Zawada's tough. 
and he's very, very aggressive on the feet. He's really, really good. I, I think he's there to be got on the against anybody that's got a decent ground game. I think he, he will struggle with on the ground. Um, but on the feet, he's super, super aggressive. Had a very fun fight with Danny Roberts and I think it was Holland or Germany, Germany, uh, back in June or July. And uh, ultimately close to winning that fight there. He's a guy that I watched in KSW a couple of fights beforehand. And he's just a tough, tough guy. And he could cause Lee Jing Liang problems here for the simple fact that, excuse me, um, Lee's going to be amped. He's fighting in China. He's going to have that massive crowd behind him. And he is there to be, to be hit at. He's a very big hitter himself, but you have seen him being put down. I think Jake Matthews got him down, uh, put him down with some strikes. He was a little bit dirty in that fight as well with a couple of couple of discretions. Um, came back against Dai Chiabi in Singapore back in June and um, really worked leg kicks very well in that one and was just the better fighter. Abby, I'm surprised he's actually... I thought the UFC might have kept him around for another fight, but I've seen he fought and won and lost a couple of weeks back there. But Li Jing Liang, all action. Um, all action fighter. He's, I, I, I smile every time I think of that guy's name. He's just he's a really fun fighter to watch. Knockouts of Anton Defia, Bobby Nash, Sako. Nothing to really write home about. Frank Camacho was a great fight. Um, back and forth, fight of the night performance. Mm. Mm. It's hard picking this card. There's so many juiced up favourites that I'm, try I'm trying to find a few dogs that I'm super confident in. And that's why um, I think Kanan Song's probably going to be a dog by fight time by the by the looks of what I'm seeing in some social media sites and uh, forums and stuff. I think people are going to go on Alex Marone and maybe push Kanan Song. So he might go a dog. Um, I'm going to pick Lee here. But I do think that David Zawada has a very, very has a good chance of winning this fight. I think the aggression that Jing Liang has, he might walk onto a shot and get put down by Zawada, who is super aggressive himself. So yeah. Just how am I going to pick Lee? I think if I'm going to pick Lee, I'll pick him via TKO. I think I'd feel more confident in that. He might be might be one of these fights where he sits back and maybe picks it Zawada with leg kicks and then uses combinations on top of that. Um but Sawada, I think, is a live fighter. If you want to take a shot on an underdog, he might not be the worst underdog. I feel more confident in Li Jing Liang, though. I think fighting at home, you're going to have to do something special to really put this guy down. So I'll go Li Jing Liang, TKO. Maybe go early round number three. Song Yudong against Vince Morales in the bantamweight division is up next. This was the first fight I really kind of looked into in this fight card because... Uh, I don't know why I was looking to fade Song Yudong last time out against Felipe Aranches. I thought it was maybe just a little bit too soon for the young kid. And boy, did he prove me wrong. He absolutely went out there, bossed the veteran, pretty much sent Aranches into retirement, caught him with a beautiful elbow against the cage, super aggressive with nice high kicks, body kicks, low kicks, um, clinching against the cage, really nice footwork, nice angling off with his combinations. Um, nice head movement, never keeping on the centre line moving um, for anything that Aranches has because Aranches, when he wants to, can be super, super dangerous. Looks looks the part. The kid looks the part. We've seen a vicious knockout. We've seen a, a submission over a really not a great guy in Barak Kandari. Um, but you can see things there. And I think working at Alpha Male, working with the better fighters that he's got around him, Mendes is coming back into the gym and maybe Garbrandt if he's in the gym. I don't know. Um, it seems to be that he's picking up a lot of skills. I thought, right, maybe this Morales kid who I knew I knew of him because he fought Domingo Pilarte uh, earlier on this year. And I thought um, I thought he looked okay in that fight. He got caught with a rear naked choke in the second round. But then when I went back, actually, because that was the only fight I'd ever seen of Vince Morales was um, the Pilarte loss. Then I went back on to his regional scenes and there was I wasn't impressed with what I'd seen on his regional kind of career from Vince Morales. It was quite funny because Tony Frickland, the next UFC fighter from years ago, was actually his head coach. And I hadn't heard that name for years. And I hadn't seen that face in years, so it was interesting. But I went back, majority of his fights were on YouTube. Uh, Josh Wick fight, lost via submission. Uh, watched the Andrew Cruz fight, came out very strong. 
knocked him down early and then probably lost the next 10 minutes of that fight before Cruz gassing out in the third, getting us a, a TKO. The Brandon Himpelman fight, first round, he gets put down. Then he kind of stabilizes himself, and, and as the fight goes on, he lands the better shots and eventually puts Himpelman out in the, the second. Um, what I like about him, he's pretty composed. Um, I think he's got a bit of power there. I think that um, he doesn't throw in bunches. He's very precise with his strikes. But I think this Song Yudong's just got too much too much arsenal for him. I think he's going to come out, push a pace on Morales. I think um, I think he could get takedowns on Morales if he wanted to. I think he will outstrike Morales. Song has to be very, very careful. Um, but yeah, Song's going to win this fight. I think he, he could ultimately stop him however he wants via submission. Via Tikio has to be careful on the feet though because if he gets too aggressive, he could get cracked by this kid. Song and Dong, I think it's going to be my most confident pick in the whole entire card here. Uh, I'm going to pick him via stoppage. So, cool main event of the night. This is another interesting one that uh, has caught my eye. It's Alistair Overeem against the, the debuting Sergei Pavlovich, um, who I've seen a fair bit of from the Fight Nights um, organization in Russia. And all, honestly, I don't think he's a I think he looks a physical specimen, but and he, he he's kind of he's he's very like his presence is right there. He, he he can get in your face. Um, I don't think his striking's all that great. I don't even think his ground game's all that great. Um, and some of the fights that I've watched of him, um, have just not been impressive to me. The he's fought okay guys when he stepped up i think he struggles to get them out and that's why he goes to decision um i mean these last couple of fights michael uh muck napkin he went there well, that was a clear step up um and couldn't really he went to decision in that one did did knock out his last guy uh, Sinenikov, uh in the first round where he was kind of swinging and caught him with a big one there but uh yeah, there's a couple of guys, a couple of kind of fat guys he's faced in the middle part of his career as well. But he's not been a pro all that long. I think he's only been a pro for like four years. And he's facing a guy here who's... We all know what you're going to get with Alistair over him. Um, you hit his chin. You can put this guy down with ease. You, you can. That's the way you beat him. You've got to find his chin. Because if you don't, he's going to make it a hard, awkward fight where... Um, He's got a lot of tools at his disposal. He knows how to fight. He can fight smart if he needs. Love the fact that he's left uh, Winkle Johns, Jackson Wink. And it's quite funny that he's moved over to um, his previous foe in Curtis Blades. He's moved over there. So, I mean, that was a vicious knockout. His last fight, by the way, way back at UFC 225 in the middle part of the year. Um, got taken down in the third and got elbowed from guard and it was horrible before that he got knocked out against Francis Ngano horrible I think he was um, I think that the win against uh, Verdun was probably warranted I think that's that's what he should do here he should fight smart I think that Pavlovich he kind of throws a lot of single shots and against someone like Overeem I think he can he can counter that I actually think he can take this Pavlovich that guy down I think he's got the better ground game over Pavlovich. I think Pavlovich has to come out, push him against the cage and throw shots and hopefully land. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that I see Alistair over him as an underdog here. He's a bet that I like on this card. I've got that and I think I've got a three-team parlay. I can't remember the people who are in it, but if you check my bet and my tips, you will probably see it. Um, I'm going to pick Alistair over him here. I think he could take this guy down. I think he can dominate him on the floor. I think working with Curtis Blades is going to... And if you go back and watch the like old, old room fights, back in Pride, he used to take guys down. He used to have a pretty vicious submission game, good chokes. Um, and then he went into his striking form where um, he was one of the most elite strikers. He can he can fight long. He can fight smart, not um, put himself in danger. You can see him like even in like, the Miosic fight. He, he was a little bit silly. He went for a uh, submission there, got caught and then got pounded out, but he was running away in that fight. He might have to do a little bit of that in this fight here because Pavlovich will come forward. I just feel more confident picking Alistair over him here. He's got years of experience. I mean, when was this guy's first fight? Um, so much experience. It's crazy. 1999 was his first. Nearly 20 years. Wow, that's crazy. 
Um, and then when you seen he was fighting in Pride, I think probably uh, in his tenth, tenth, eleventh fight. So he's been fighting a lot, a lot of good guys for a lot of years. But like you say, you can knock him out. So I can see why a lot of people will be confident. Pavlovich, I'm not. I think Reem is the the better overall fighter, and I think that he can win this fight here. So I'm going to pick Alistair over Reem uh, via decision. And the main event of the night, we have Curtis Razor Blades against uh, Francis Ingano. This is an interesting fight because I liked the first fight. thought it was super competitive. Uh, Blades got takedowns. I think when I, if you watch the Croatia breakdown, that was years ago, I think a couple of years ago now. Uh, I liked what I saw initially of Curtis Blades, very athletic, um, an improving kind of striker, and that's something that he showed throughout his UFC tenure. That, that has got better, but his bread and butter his his grappling, his timing. Um, I think he's got a really good chin. You've seen that in the Mark Hunt fight. That's the one that I always kind of take a lot from is that Mark Hunt from because he did get hit clean and when he, he kind of wobbled a little bit, he went in for the takedown. He went in and um, uh, as soon as he got hit, he was like, right, I'm taking this to the ground. Took it to the ground and just dominated down there. Um, and he's beaten. He's beaten good guys. I mean, over him... That's a, a guy, like I was just talking about there, he's been around for a long time, he's seen a lot of things. He dominated that fight, he got a load, a load of takedowns in that fight um, and just looked, he looked the part and that's the step ups you've got to make in the, the heavyweight division. I mean, I think he got like four or five takedowns past the guard. Um, I think he got like 10 plus takedowns against Hunt, took down Olenek and that's a guy you have to be super, super careful with taking down. So he will go into opposition's um, strong points like the strike and he tried to do a little bit with Hunt but when he realised that he had an advantage with the, the grappling he took it. Like I said, in the Ingano fight, which is his only loss uh, in his career he took down Francis a couple of times before that got stopped due to the eye poke uh, due to the eye closure I should say um, but looked very competitive and didn't look out of that fight since then Francis Ingano we've all seen the rise, the ascendancy to the top, where I think he got in his own head. He started to believe his own hype. Um, before that, when he was such a fight, and everybody was blowing him up. I mean, everybody was blowing him up. Um, and the Steepy fight, he's going to wreck Steepy. And Steepy just handled him like the pro that he is. Um, got taken down. I thought he did well to work back to his feet. Um, but just the better fighter won. And then he looked to shell himself against Derek Lewis. And this is what this is what I'm saying here. That's enough about that fight, by the way. Um, He's coming into this fight here. He has got to re-establish himself because if he loses this one, I think it's a long, long way back. And he's got the confidence of winning the first fight, even though I thought it was fairly close. Uh, I think he was probably just edging it, but Curtis Blades was always in the fight. Um, <clears throat> he needs to keep it standing because if Blades gets him down, Blades will, I think, start to wreck him a little bit. Um, you see the Mayosic one there where Steepy was taking him down, hanging off his back, grinding him out. I think that Blades has just got as good a style as what Steepy Mayosic has with his wrestling. Um, great control, passes really well. Um, and I think he'll be up for this one. I really do. I think he's going to come out here. I don't think the betting lines are one. I think he should be lower than minus 200. I think I've even seen him higher than that. I think he should be down maybe 175, maybe 150 at a push, minus 150. Um, and I can see some people taking shots at Ingram. I don't think it's the worst shot in the world either because he's got that big power that can put your lights out. Strong athletic freak. Um, could turn could turn up and do kind of anything and, and you wouldn't really be surprised by it. But I feel more confident in picking Curtis Blades here. I think I'm like 75% kind of confident he can get this done. Just don't get hit. Fight smart. Get takedowns. Control the fight there. And I think he will... He will take out Francis Ingano personally I think he, his accumulation of strikes will, will make Francis Ingano quit so I'm going to go a third round TKO for Curtis Razor Blades there so that's my fairly quick breakdown of UFC um, Beijing, it's not the the card, um, I thought this is one to kind of try and maybe not talk so much in and just get it in quick um, we've got two fight cards next week we've got the tough finale um on the Friday, and then I think we've got Adelaide on the Sunday or the Saturday. So it's um, Rafael De Santos against Cameron Usman in the Friday night main event. Junior De Santos v Tai Tuivasa in the other main event, and then we're on to UFC 231 
Brian Ortega, Max Holloway. I can't wait for that card. Great card to break down. Looking forward to speaking about it. Until then, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, leave your bets down below. I want to know what you're betting this week. I want to know who your conference picks are. Um, as always, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell at the side there. I'll notify you when my video is online. You can sit and watch it. I will put timestamps here on the fights you'd like to listen to. If you don't want to listen to me rambling on about fights you don't care about, then albeit, as always, I appreciate the support. I'll be back next week, so keep an eye out for that, and uh, I will see you all very, very soon. Take care.